Welcome back designers. If you're new to the channel, my name is Richard Carpenter, a web design illustrator, and in today's quick video I'll be showing you how to create your very own isometric grid from scratch using Adobe Illustrator. Combine this with Illustrator Actions, you'll also be able to create quick and easy isometric shapes. Okay, so to get started with the isometric grid, the first thing we want to do is select the grid tool. Now you can find the grid tool within the line segment tool. So if you click and hold the line segment tool, you get the extra menu which flies out and you just want to select the rectangular grid tool. Click anywhere within the artboard and we just want to create a grid size of 100 pixels by 100 pixels with 100 horizontal dividers and 100 vertical dividers. Once you have those options filled out, press OK. Horizontally and vertically center the grid within the artboard. And then just to make the grid more visible, we're going to add a black stroke using something very, very small, so something like 0.2. And then from within the Transform tool, if you haven't got the Transform tool open, go to Window, Transform, or use the shortcut key, Shift F8. From within the Transform tool, you want to make sure the chain icon on the right hand side so the constraint width and height properties has got the line through it so the chain is broken so you don't want it to be like that you want it to have the line through the middle and the field you want to concentrate on is the height field for the grid to have the isometricness look to it we have to use a specific value and that specific value is 86.602% so not pixels it has to have it has to be percent and then press enter and then we want to concentrate on these two bottom boxes so we have shear and rotate so the first one which is shear we want to shear it by minus 30 degrees and then we want to rotate the grid by 30 degrees so once you've changed the height you've sheared it and rotated it all you need to do now is scale up the grid so if you scale up quite big as big as the artboard what you'll end up with is an isometric grid the only thing that's left to do is to add the vertical lines and to do that we want to go to view and make sure the snap to point option is ticked and then select the line segment tool with the line segment tool selected I'm going to go right to the far left corner and then just drag a vertical line and make sure it lines up with that corner once you've got it lined up with the corner select the line hold down the alt key shortcut to drag a duplicate whilst you're dragging hold down the shift key and then just move the line over to the next corner so the next corner within the first square don't deselect the line, but what you want to do is zoom out so we can see the whole artboard and then just simply hold down the Control D shortcut which is transform again and what that will do is it will create a bunch of lines all the way across until you get to the other end. From within the layers panel we scroll all the way down and lock our grid into place what we can do is just make a selection around all the lines hold down the alt key select the middle anchor point and just drag the lines as tall as the grid with all the lines in place what we want to do is unlock our grid layer make a selection around everything and go to object group and then select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle the same width and height as your current artboard horizontally and vertically center that within the artboard control on the keyboard to make a selection around everything right click and go to make a clipping mask and what that will do is it will clip the isometric grid to the rectangle and then if we lock the relock the layer we can use start using our isometric grid to create our isometric artwork 
Now, if you are planning on creating some isometric artwork, what I highly suggest is you create yourself a set of actions. So there's three sets of actions which we can do, and that is creating an isometric left shape, an isometric right shape, and an isometric top shape. And to demonstrate what these are, I'm just going to create a rectangle, 100 by 100 pixels, and then I'm going to create two duplicates. Once you have your shapes in place, what you want to do is go to the Actions tab. If you don't see the Actions tab, you can go to Window, Actions. And within the Actions tab, what we want to do is create a new action set. So if you click the folder icon and then call this Isometric Set, and then press OK. Once you have the folder created, what we'll do is we'll create individual actions which sit within this folder. So the first one that we're going to do is an isometric left action. So to start the action you want to click the little plus icon. Call this isometric left. If you wanted to you can also assign a shortcut key. So within the function key drop down menu you can select F2 to F12 and what that'll do is as soon as you hit that shortcut it'll perform that particular action on the shape you've got currently selected. You can also assign a colour for each one if you wanted to, we're not going to bother with these at this time. And then hit the record button to start recording the action. So at the moment now everything we do is being recorded, so if we select our first shape, make sure the chain icon has got the little line through it so it's broken. And then concentrating on the height field, what we want to do is use that isometric magic value again. So 86.602%. And then the shear option, we want to change to minus 30 degrees. And the rotate option, we want to do minus 30 degrees. Once we've performed them three transform actions, we can select the stop icon, which will stop recording the action. And then we have our first isometric shape created. The next action we want to record is the top isometric action. So if you select the middle shape, just collapse that first action. Select the create new action icon and call this isometric top and press record. Again, within the height field, that magic isometric number, 86.602%. And then shear the shape by 30 degrees. And then rotate the shape by minus 30 degrees. And then select stop from within the actions panel. Select our last shape. And then again, hit the record new action call this isometric right, hit the record button, again that magic isometric number for the height 86.602%, shear it by 30 degrees and then rotate it by 30 degrees. Once you've performed those few changes hit the stop button for the final time and then we have our three isometric actions ready to use for another day. We can also just zoom in and test our shapes. So if we move these shapes together, it should create a cube, which it does. And then any new shapes that you want to create. So create a quick square. Select the action you want to perform, hit play and then it will transform each one to, according to whatever action you've selected. That's it for this week designers, if you found the video useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around for more content, until next time I'll see you all in the next one.